Hi, Tony Sweet here. Um, every so often when I shoot um, very long exposures using the uh, the Singray 510 or 15 stop ND filter, um, I will find that the clouds don't move enough uh, for me. So there's a, a software trick that can actually um, help that out a bit. So let's uh, begin by duplicating our layer. And then we'll grab the lasso tool and we'll select the area that, that's going to be affected by the uh, maneuver. Then we'll take this all the way up to here and all the way down to here, whatever. And then we'll fix that by holding down shift. See the plus sign? We can extend that out the corner like that. We have our selection. Now we need our feather. Go to Refine Edge. And I've got mine preset to about 31, 30 in that range for feathering. Gives us a nice smooth feather so you don't see that hard line that can occur. Let me just show you. That's with no feather. And then we'll, we'll type in our 30 which is pretty much where I like it most of the time, and then we'll save that for future reference. And we'll hit OK. Now we have our selection, and we have our feather. At this point, we're going to go into Filter, and then Blur, and then Radio Blur. And we're going to want to have this about where this is. That's pretty much where it is. As you can see, it'll all pull the lines toward this area. 40 is a bit high, but we can always go in after the fact in our layers palette and dial back the opacity. So I tend to want to add more than I intend to use, then dial it back in the layers palette. So let's OK this out. And it's a fairly large file. I didn't downsize these. And then when it's done, uh, you will see that um, it looks like it should have looked. <laughs> there we go. A little more softer, a little movement. A little more soft, I mean, a little more movement. And then we'll deselect that, Command and Control D. And that's our basic image. So the difference is pretty profound for one to the other. But I kind of want to take this one step further. Let, let's uh, take this into black and white. So let me just, since I like this effect, I'll just flatten it. And then we'll go into Filter, and then uh, Nix Software, and then Silver Effects Pro 2. And we'll bring this over to our window. Here we go. And that's our basic look. So now I'm going to come in here and, and underexpose it by a stop just to see... Um, what that looks like or maybe take it down to high contrast Let's see what that does okay let's um, let's go back to underexposed by a stop let's, let's start up here and then we'll basically increase contrast on our own here make it a bit uh, a little bit brighter and we'll add some contrast, global contrast. That darkens the sky a bit. Amplify the whites. There you go. Somewhere right in there. And then we'll drop in our control point to brighten up these rocks here a bit. And then we can hold down the option, I believe it's Alt in PC land, and click and drag this control setting through the entire rock area to brighten that up a little bit. Just drag it. Click and drag. That's what does that. And then we'll take one more and drop it into the water. There we go. And then just pull that from side to side. Darken that up a little bit. That way we'll maintain our little light opening in the middle here. 
There we go. And then we'll bring this down a bit. And then make it a little bit brighter. So we have that reflection of the cloud up here. So that's pretty much what we're talking about. So if we say, I think I'm good with this. So let's just OK this. Let's OK through this. And it'll take a few seconds to write over here because it is kind of, I didn't downsize it. It's a fairly large file. But you will see, and we'll look at the history palette, and we'll look at this turned on and off to see the difference. But as you can see here, it's going to go into black and white land. Here we go. Here's our black and white image. And there's our color shot. But most importantly is our history, where we see where it came from, which is there, which is pretty worthless. The clouds look, uh, look just wrong. And I cloned out some of the little specks here also. But from here to here, this uh, has a real nice feel to it. I like the cloud movement, the way it, I like this beautiful triangular shape here, etc. So again, one more time, here's our color, and here's our black and white conversion. So that is one way to create cloud movement when your long exposure um, doesn't give you what you want. Again, remember that these clouds sometimes just sit still or practically still for long periods of time, depending on the airstream and et cetera. So if you do, in this case, two minutes and don't get the cloud movement that you're looking for, we can do this little maneuver here and make this look like it should have looked. So that's it. And um, hope you enjoyed this found it helpful, and we'll see you online.